So uh, today I'm going to talk about a case study uh, we did uh, with uh, SoundCloud, who are an audio platform. I'm not sure if many of you know about them, but they're doing uh, incredibly well. Um, they're a company which is used uh, by lots of um, different uh, creators of music to upload uh, their audio, uh, and so they can build an audience and for lots of um, uh, consumers to go and discover new music and so on. So it was great when they came to us. Uh, first of all, because uh, a lot of our um, uh, team really enjoy listening to SoundCloud as they sit there plugged in looking at, uh, at data most of the day. And so they're excited to be able to help uh, them as a company to improve their services. But also they came to us with quite an interesting challenge, which we really believe will be the future of research. So um, understanding uh, big data to understand what people are doing, but using mobile diaries to understand why people are doing it, what are their motivations, and the context in which that big data sits. So before we go into that, just to explain a little bit about Underwise Research. Uh, Underwise Research is a panel company for mobile research. Our goal is to free up the world's opinions. So to give consumers um, in mobile-only countries uh, a voice, allow them to uh, tell us about what they think, uh, but also to allow consumers to tell us about what they think whilst they're in the moment, whilst they're out and about. So we've been going for about three years now. We've got offices in Singapore and in London, uh, and in Brighton, where we keep our techies. Um, and we've done about 10 million surveys now. 11. 11. So, 11, sorry, 11, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. Um, across uh, 57 countries. Um, we have a focus on emerging markets, but also work in most of the developed countries uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, we provide access to the consumers, so we've built something similar to a mobile advertising network to gain access to these audiences. Um, but we also uh, provide the survey technology as well, which works on feature phones just mm -hmm. as well as on smartphones. Has the picture kind of changed? So, um, SoundCloud, uh, as I explained beforehand, they're a fantastic audio platform, very innovative company. They've raised an awful lot of money, um, but they're also doing it incredibly well. They have uh, 200 million users, and they actually only have 200 uh, employees, so uh, a million uh, users for every employee, which is quite uh, fantastic. Uh, about 12 hours of audio is uploaded every minute onto their platform, um, which is a phenomenal amount of data uh, when you start to think about it. So these guys know quite a bit about big data, and so it's quite interesting uh, when they came to us with this problem, because it really highlights, I think, a lot of the structural problems with big data that's out there uh, as well. So this is um, one of their slides, and uh, apologies that uh, Nadine's from SoundCloud uh, could not be with us today. Um, but they thought a lot about it, uh, and the way in which they um, uh, explain it uh, is really about the three Ds. And so um, with marketing, we know about you know, the four Ps or five Ps or however you are looking to it. Uh, with big, big data, they're looking to see things like the volume of that data. So is it um, uh, megabytes, is it terabytes, is it petabytes? And looking to the velocity of that, so is this batch data, is this real-time data? Um, but the thing which is um, really interesting to them is the variety of data which they have. And so a lot of it comes in uh, table formats, and you can actually do stuff with that quite uh, nicely. Um, but the vast majority of the data that they're getting is very much unstructured. And so they have tons and tons of data coming to them, 12 hours of audio um, uh, every, every minute. But they can't really do too much of it, because it's unstructured, it's incredibly difficult to get at. What do they do with it, and how do they gain some sort of meaning from it? So what they did to us is they came over uh, and they said, um, you know, we understand quite a lot about our users. They understand what they listen to. We quite often understand the interactions between the creators of this music and the listeners of this music. But we really don't understand the context of it. We also don't understand the wider market um, of audio listeners and music listeners in total. And also, to be honest, they can't, quite often can't be bothered to analyse um, a lot of the data to just find out simple question, uh, answers to simple questions. And so this is why the uh, combination of uh, big data linking together with mobile diaries allowed them to understand how this data fit, fitted into context. So this is the principal aims of the study, was to find out um, you know, how long people were listening to music for, the time of day they were listening to it, why they were doing it, and who they were doing it with, uh, and also the impact that this had on people's everyday lives. So the research methodology which we used um, was a mobile diary. So this is how a mobile diary looks. Um, we sell this in a way similar to a survey complete, which you buy a completed diary. What happens with it is you get an introductory survey, and you get um, a series of diary interactions in the middle, and then an exit survey. Uh, and, it, and it means you do things like pre and post surveys, or um, in this instance, to just understand their customers in a lot more depth, as well as linking it all to the mobile diary data as well. So, what we did um, in the mobile diary is we asked Oh, in the introductory survey, first of all, we asked a few things about profiling that consumer. We asked them a little bit about their, their motivations for um, listening to music, what sorts of music they like, that sort of stuff. 
Um, then when we got into the mobile diary, we asked things such as, um, what did you listen to? Was this um, uh, audio? Was this uh, music? Was it live music? Um, was it the radio? Things like that. We then asked things like, how did you do it? So what device did you use? Did you listen to it on your mobile phone? Did you listen to it on a computer? Um, was it a band you know, just there in front of you? We then asked things like, who are you with? Um, why did you do it? What were your motivations were you for? Did you just want something to accompany you? Uh, so on. And, uh, and all of this brought together really gave us a great understanding as to um, why people and what people were doing when they were listening to music and audio. Once we had done that, we then got into a phase of data consolidation. And so what we did with this project is we had the two different groups. We had uh, 350 people who were from our panel. We then had uh, another 350 people who were SoundCloud users. With the SoundCloud users, what we did is we had to ask a lot uh, about their permission and so on because, uh, well, not only is them sound like a German company, so they're incredibly um, tight on these things, but we also needed to make sure that we were completely upfront and transparent about what we were going to do. So in the um, uh, SoundCloud uh, sample, uh, we asked them uh, to give us their SoundCloud ID. We then got into a data consolidation process where we got the research data where we knew the SoundCloud ID of that person. We then had the big data, so the server-side uh, log file data about what people were listening to, and so we could actually push those two data sets um, together to create a kind of an enriched data set which enabled us to um, really drill down into you know, not only what were people listening to, um, but why they were doing that, and the connections which they had with the listeners uh, as well as with the creators. So I'll just show you a little bit about some of the uh, results now.
wider context over. And what they found is that peak time um, in lunchtime, actually that was when the, the mass market of uh, people were actually really doing a lot of social sharing of this music as well. And so the implication of that was that they managed to um, put out lots of Facebook campaigns um, on the back of it and really start to accelerate their growth in terms of um, user acquisition. The other really nice thing that they did with this data is they packaged it all up. And because a lot of the people on their platform are um, uh, creators, what they did is they made it into nice infographics and so on, and they shared it with these creators. So these creators on their platform actually got to be able to use that and understand how people were listening to their music and their audience. Now, um, one of the things which we um, uh, come across um, pretty often, in fact, on a daily basis, our client service team uh, will say, uh, and this is very much the um, uh, uh, issue we had with SoundCloud, is that they want to know so much stuff. Um, and a mobile survey in general um, is fantastic at being able to collect, um, we say on average, 15 to 20 questions. It's great at that. But SoundCloud had tons and tons of ideas about what they wanted to discover. And pretty much all of our clients um, have that issue as well. And so, just change subjects a little bit now uh, and talk about um, survey chunking, because this is something which we use with SoundCloud, uh, and we've also been rolling out uh, very much um, across um, most of our clients that have um, real need to collect quite a large amount of data, but want to get through to mobile-only audiences, um, and also want to be able to um, understand and meet their client requirements or their internal needs um, for this data. So what we've done is created uh, a survey format um, which we call it Survey Chunking, um, which enables um, two surveys to be, uh, a survey, for example, a 30 question survey, to be split up into two different chunks um, to enable our clients to, uh, to collect enough data. So what happens here is we send an SMS um, to uh, our respondents, they take um, survey one, we then give them the option to go through to survey two, if they decide they don't want to do it, we then send them a text message the next day to ask them to do the second one. Now, it's been working quite successfully for us, um, but what we wanted to understand is, is this genuinely getting better research data um, for, our, for our clients? And so we embarked on a piece of research and research uh, to understand um, what this actually does. And so what we did is we um, did three different surveys. One which was a 15 questions straight survey. We know that this works, our clients have been coming back to this for quite a while, and it um, uh, genuinely does get great survey data for them. Um, however, when we do a 30 question straight survey, um, we uh, often see some issues with the data and we're very reluctant to do that and our, you know, our client service team now actually kind of pretty much point blank refuse to do it because we know it's um, uh, not going to be the best way to do it. So we tested that and we also tested a 30 question survey which we split up into two chunks. And what we saw in terms of the completion rates on this is that, yeah, lo and behold, the 15 question survey got the um, highest response rate, um, or highest completion rate. Actually, the two-chunk um, uh, 30 question survey got a very comparable um, uh, response rate to uh, the 30 question survey. Overall, 80% is a pretty good um, completion rate for a survey anyway, so um, we were fairly okay with that. What actually happens with the two-chunk survey is that you have about 93% of people who do the first chunk, and then actually the second chunk, you have about 99% of people who complete that, but you lose some people in the middle, <laughs> and so actually overall you only get about 80%. But that wasn't the question which we were really trying to answer. The question we were trying to answer was, is it good quality data? And so what we found out is we put in a lot of different um, types of tests into uh, this piece of research and research. One of them was a, a track question. Uh, and with this track question, uh, we've basically made up a brand and we put it into uh, uh, the back of, um, uh, of the survey. And we found out that in the 30 question survey, um, about 9% of people fell for this. However, if it was in a two chunk um, survey, actually the amount of people who fell for this track question was very similar to um, the uh, 15 question straight survey. We did a variety of different tests, but this is just one I wanted to highlight today. Overall, we can really see that um, using two chunk surveys really provides much better quality for our, uh, data for our, our customers, but it's in a way in which it's suitable for the mobile world and suitable for mobile uh, only audiences. Thank you. Sorry, the background question. Um, it was a shampoo brand 